We're here at uh, the Taylor Creek Lake Tahoe Visitor Interpretation Center, um, currently run by the Great Basin Institute out of the University of Nevada, Reno. This is my favorite uh, interpretation of a natural landscape of any place I've visited over the last couple of decades, and it's one I, I draw a lot of examples from and inspiration from. Uh, We'll rock down the trail real briefly in a second, but I just wanted to start out by saying that um, they put a lot of attention into their interpretation here. A lot of it isn't just facts, there, there definitely are facts, but a lot of it is an attempt to in, engage you and in, in, in have you do actions and make observations yourself on the trail to answer some questions or to see things in a different light. The attention to detail is fantastic, so in this case this is a display about the water clarity of Lake Tahoe, but rather than just putting up a simple basic display, um, let's say on this side over here we have a, a, a display holder that's uh, mimicking a tree trunk, which is cool and that's neat, but um, really, really neat. Um, these guys here, since th this display is dis discussing water, um, where it's just some simple sheet metal, but it's anodized and it's, it's um, uh, colored so that as we move it, I'm not sure if this picks up on the video, but you, uh, it feels like water is moving by. So really, really neat attention to detail. As we go down the trail, there's lots of, and this is a trail that both you can be led on or you can just simply uh, explore yourself. And I would recommend to anybody coming by Lake Tahoe, anybody, even if you only have 15, 20 minutes, but also um, a great example for those of us elsewhere and a great model for interpreting natural ecosystems. The defining thing about the interpretation here is that it, <clears throat> much of it is not fact-based, it's more inquiry-based. So in this case, this sign asks you to, to look around and to stop for a second and to listen. It doesn't necessarily tell you what's going on, it rather invites you to observe the landscape. And of course, my favorite um, display, I think of, of all time, <laughs> I saw this first about 20 years ago and it just was awesome. Um, which is, rather than saying how many uh, gallons flow into Lake Tahoe or whatever's going on in this particular watershed, um, they invite you to figure it out yourself. And so the display uh, for this particular sign has a bunch of pipes and valves on it, which are obviously non-functioning. But then what they have right here is they have a little weir. You get down here, they have a little weir and you can step down here and there's a bucket. And so it was a one gallon bucket. And so you're invited to take that bucket, fill it up with this water that's coming out of the, the creek here and time it and get an estimate of the water flow. So really, really cool, a very engaging way, rather than telling people another way to invest in, invite them to investigate what's going on with this ecosystem in this landscape. Really, really cool, really fun way to engage visitors. These guys also do a really good job with um, provocative questions. So what is this? Is this, is this junk land or is this valuable land uh, here on, in the uh, marsh flowing into, um, flowing into Lake Tahoe? And again, the, the stands are mimicking reeds and rushes. So all really cool. And unfortunately, there's a lot of phalaris here, which isn't, <laughs> which isn't what we want to see. but. But um, again, the notion of everything is continu continuous. The story, the architecture, the engagement, really, really great way to, to get people involved with this landscape. These guys also benefit from very much a three-dimensional uh, structure here, the canopy. In, in many points, the trail feels very intimate. Uh, the vegetation is actually overgrowing the 
trail itself and it very much leads to this sense of enclosure and the sense of seclusion even though we're just a few you know 100 meters from the parking lot um, but really nice way of transitioning to different elements and different communities here on the edge of Lake Tahoe. Where appropriate, they've also used um, elevated boardwalks so that we're not trampling on the marsh and we get a bit higher perspective than if we were down low. Um, and they've here they've done a nice job again using the local vegetation, in this case uh, different pine trees that have been felled. They've used those as the bumpers to keep people uh, from going off the edge, um, but really nice boardwalk. When they have done uh, or needed to do more railings, they've also taken care to um, have uh, aspects that allow younger folks or shorter folks to be able to see through it. So instead of doing the wood contiguously here, they've done some braided mesh uh, so that you can still, even folks down low, can still look into the marsh and see the frogs and the vegetation and the fish. Instead of just talking about uh, facts, again, uh, more questions. In this case, uh, talking about some riffles uh, in the stream, and they've also incorporated things like this uh, existing beaver dam into the interpretation. So using whatever uh, unusual elements exist uh, here uh, as part of the trail, and the trail designed around those elements. So while it's currently closed for repairs, this little observation chamber down here goes down into a, a cross section of the stream. So the stream goes right by it and you have a glass sided wall where you can look uh, into the stream and see the fish and the rocks and the water boatmen and all that kind of cool stuff. Really, really um, fantastic interpretive element. In addition to all the natural history, they've also worked in some of the management and monitoring into some of these displays. So in addition to just the basic ecological restoration displays that um, exist in many places, which they have here as well, um, these guys have uh, not hidden the, for example, meteorological monitoring station, but their weather station is in full view right on the trail, inviting folks to sort of check it out, to ask about it, to wonder and to engage. Most places would take this and put it somewhere where the public can't see it and keep it out of sight and out of mind. The designers have also taken special care to make sure that some of these exhibits are really aimed at different age groups. And in this case, this is a little area uh, right here along this little uh, fen bog area that invites you to stand here and jump up and down. So I don't know if you can see it. It's hard to see with this video camera, but as I'm jumping, uh, all these sedges are vibrating. So not, the grandpa probably won't do that, but the little kids will and have a great old time. <laughs> 